Hey there folks, welcome to Dying Light 2. Originally, I wanted to start this video off by telling you how in this video, I'll be uncovering a scandal, trying to befriend a horde of zombies, and saving millions from dehydration by bringing the water supply back. But I guess showing off my below average parkour skills is just as good of an opening visual, if not better. So I wanted my first activity of the day to be a good deal, which is why I fixed up this windmill with a highly skilled maneuver that only experts can perform. So with my good deed of the day out of the way, it was time to even it out by stealing stuff from a military convoy. There I saw a horde of zombies who were all very friendly and came to meet me as soon as they saw me. I showed them my cool UV torch as a way to establish dominance right out of the gate. And hot damn, what do you know, it worked like a charm. One of the zombies loved it so much, he rushed forward to hug me. So sorry champ, but I'm pretty sure I won't be taking that hug until you get rid of your flesh and fungus flavored toothpaste. Wanting to continue establishing my dominance, I take on the biggest guy in the joint. He looks like he's tough on the outside and soft on the inside. So I throw him a toy, as a peace offering. That toy turns out to be a mine and I end up blasting him in the face. My bad big guy. This attracts all of his biter friends who immediately start attacking me. And then I use the most peaceful negotiation tactic known to mankind, chopping their head off. Just look at how effectively that shuts them up. And now it was time to enjoy the spoils that this place had to offer. These military trucks could have anything in them, from prototype weapons to experimental drugs that would give me superpowers, it's rations, yep. Packets of food, that's what I was looking for. Wow, I mean 30 zombies fighting for two packets of food? What is this, zombie Africa or something? That joke sounded better in my head for some reason. Sorry about that. <laughs> but no more joking around, as it's time to get serious. Our friend Aether is really sick, and his last hope of survival is a remedy from a healer who I have to go and talk to. He's juggling between life and death right now, and every minute wasted gets him closer to dying. But you know what they say, a man's gotta sleep when he's gotta sleep. Eight hours every day. It's not negotiable. Like this video if you two prioritize your sleep over everything. After waking up, I knock on the healer's door and her bodyguard slash brother slash boyfriend slash husband answers the door. I'm not really sure on what the relationship is here. Turns out she is blind and she needs me to collect a flower called recluse. But only the small petals though, as the big petals are poisonous. This really is quite an important task as one mistake and a man could die. Time is running out and it's all on me to save his life. Which is why I immediately ignore this questline and start a different one. Subscribe to the channel as a show of appreciation for my responsibility taking skills. A group was supposed to source some UV lamps for our friends in the military but they went missing. So you got to check up on them now. It turns out these crazy masked idiots who dress as if they're on the set of Mad Max called the Renegades attacked them. As I try to sneak up on them, my strategy fails miserably, which is really embarrassing. My melee go can't handle this, and I take out every single one of them. I start to follow the footsteps of the people I'm supposed to save, which leads me to Cannonbolt from Ben 10. I'm delighted to see him, but it appears as if he's not in a bright mood as he hurls huge rocks straight at me. I'm sure he hasn't had his morning cup of tea yet, otherwise he's a pretty cheerful guy. I find the group that was supposed to get the UV lamps, but of course they got attacked and sat their sorry asses down and now I have to do their job. I begin the challenging parkour run up to the roof where the lamps are and it goes amazingly well. I get to the roof eventually and I'm hearing loud grunts coming from somewhere close. Better to just get the lamps quickly and get out. As I'm grabbing the crates, Cannonbolt is back and he knocks me over the side of the building. You know what? Screw those lamps. It's time for some good old revenge. I burn him, kick him, slash him, and then burn him again, right into the ground. UV lamps secured. Fast forward to the supplier's room, and I find the guy in a precarious situation. Now, after seeing this visual, many people may start overthinking, but it's obvious. This guy is clearly running a knitting class. I mean, just look at his face. If that's not the face of a man who's completely satisfied with the quality of knitting his students just did, then I don't know what is. Later, he shows me a circular steel box, confirming that he was indeed running a knitting class, as circular boxes like these are the universally accepted storage containers used for knitting and tailoring supplies. He was offering me the box as a gift if I enrolled in his class, but 
I have to respectfully decline his offer simply because of the fact that his name is Juan and I can't say that name without laughing anymore. Juan. On my way out through the army barracks, I find a woman staring right at me with malicious intent. I shine my flashlight right at the big girl in protest. But to my shock, she actually turns to doing unholy acts. I turn to the male barracks to complain, but the guys are preoccupied with the treatment from their invisible chiropractor. Looks to be really effective though. I find this woman offering a side quest. Turns out her dad is rich and his new girlfriend has a knack for killing her ex-boyfriends and she needs my help getting evidence of this. Step family drama. Exciting. The quest is called Black Widow. How original. But this step family drama can wait though. Now it's time to bring the water supply back to the city. The water tower is really tall so I was hoping to capture some cinematic footage of me climbing it. But as it turns out, you do all of the climbing inside the tower, jumping from one rusty pipe to another in a dark room. Not as exciting as you may think. When I get to the top though, the view is just amazing. I had to stop for a second to admire it. And in that moment of time, the only thing I could think of was how in the movie Cars, there are no humans, but all the cars still have door handles. Mind-boggling thoughts aside, I give the control of the water tower to the peacekeepers, who construct a massive base all around the water tower in seconds, with the power of, I guess, magic or family or something? I don't know. But this is going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.